everybody. I'm Nick. And I'm Tim. And we're coming at you, shocking me, from the States, actually. The irony of being on a channel, Nick in the States, and, and being from the States. It's just, anyway, we're going to move on. Um, today, we're not talking about this. Put this aside. Ignore this. There's nothing secret. <laughs> we're talking about this wonderful 2013 Epiphone Les Paul Custom Pro in sexy TV Pelham. Very sexy. What is TV Pelham, you ask? Well, it's Pelham Blue, which if you're not aware of it, it's almost like a metallic-y, light, beautiful blue. But in this case, they don't grain fill it. They spray it on thin so it actually goes in the crevices of the wood. And then they put a super nice polish on it so it almost looks like like a bright blue jean looks or like metal or butter. brushed aluminum blue like butter. It grabs the eye and it brings out the blue of my eyes. It's just, it's just. You really can catch a lot of wood grain in there. I don't know that you can see that from it, this angle it's a, or distance. It's a weird looking finish when I, so this was for sale locally um, on Craigslist. And a guy the next town over from my office had it on there at a fantastic price. It was 300 bucks for the case. That's awesome. They're 600 bucks new and I think the case was optional. Just look at it though. Um, and. Wait a second. Uh, what? You can almost just hear. Oh, the thing is, right. like. That grabs the eye so much that to the uninformed, maybe non-total guitar fan, that when you put it up against something even like this, which is a 70s Les Paul custom from Gibson, this still grabs the light and says, hey, look at me over here, I'm just lovely. And that's amazing, because it's, you know, one-tenth the price. Um, <laughs> Epi makes a great part, especially nicer Epiphones lately have been just great. So go over the specs. This has Grover tuners, mahogany body, maple cap on the neck, it has Epiphones Pro Bucker pickups, which they're Epiphones import version or uh, takeoff of Gibson's uh, burst buckers. So really nice quality. They're coil tapped, so you can split the coils on each of them, which is very nice. accompany yourself like did a little ditty earlier with this thing and it does very well just like open chords you know uh, just yeah, it does, singing it's not muddy, you know it, not even not even getting into what it's what it's really made for which is to rock you know it's funny uh, i like these pickups they've got they've got a warmth to them they're 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 a really good quality pickup they're uh in their like, I love a set of 57 classics from Gibson, and, and like the Bonamassa video that we did a couple weeks ago, they, um, they are, they're a PAF. They're really nice. But I feel like these are more, they're like a burst bucket, they're a little more articulate than your classic PAF, in that they, you can do more with them. And then tap, they're, they're really flexible and good. We're actually, they have some great, lately tappable humbuckers. Yeah, I would say, um, they might have a little less punch than like a Gibson, like a 57 or something like that, but... They really hold their own. Yeah. You know, they're, uh, for what you paid for the guitar, they're. Well, and, and these weren't cheap. Complain. I think these were six hundred bucks new, six hundred dollars US here in the states. Probably a little more in Europe, even with conversion rates, because Europe always has to take on the chin. Sorry. Um, they uh, so they they were a little expensive new, but they uh, Epis go off a cliff for a little while, and then they kind of find their own, unless it's a signature model. So if you hunt, you can find a good deal. And this thing, I mean, it's doesn't have a scratch on it at a really good deal so you can hunt and if you know what you're looking for they're really great <laughs>
That's cool. Nice. I mean, I'm noticing there, in comparison to like a U.S. pickup mm -hmm. Gibson, that you can notice a little drop off there, but that's still. How would you compare them? Nice. So we recently did the uh, the Mike McKelly Patriot Instinct, which had a nice warm set of humbuckers, yeah. capable, that kind of stuff. How would you compare them, at least to that, which is uh, you know an alternate take on it? It's sort of like they're in the same range of one another mm -hmm. in terms of. I mean, I don't think one really trumps the other one, you know, incredibly. Like those ones kind of were warm to me, and these are kind of punchy. And it's funny because people say round and warm, but those aren't sounds. Those have no. No, that really has nothing to do with the sound. And so few people like about it. I Liam's an audio engineer. If you say shrill, harsh, or tinny or something. That to me is sound. But yeah. How does something sound warm? Mm. Does it? I mean, I know it what it makes means. Makes you want to curl yeah, up yeah. in its luscious <laughs> tones. No, but like I, I, I work. Liam, who's an audio engineer, and some of the other guys, some channels that I watch, they're like, oh, it's in the five hundred. They, they know the Hertz ranges, so they can say that. Where's warm? Well, it's kind of yeah. something in this range. The other thing, and we should call it out too, in the videos with Tim, the video with Danny, especially now that we're direct miking amps, what we're finding happens a lot. Is in the room more like oh, I kind of, especially the comparison back and forth. Yeah, you hear. I the like play. this one, but this one sounded better. And then you hear the playback in the YouTube you know, like, video, and it's completely the opposite yeah. of what you said. Yeah, yeah. I wonder if some people watching the videos are going like, "What the hell? What the heck is he yeah. talking about? So, it sounds good to me." I'm trying to learn know. to be like, "You tell us what you think," because it's yeah. so different, Mike. And that tells you so much about what a guitar is. And no, I, I don't do a lot of post prod. You know, I think some of the channels like I think Paul is a great example. Who then puts it in a track and it's all mixed and it's amazing and you could just listen to it in your car like it was bought um and so i feel like you can hide a lot of stuff there do a lot of stuff this is just not that that's bad but this is just my quick in the garage band with nothing on it we dump it in the track i just do the levels and it's completely different than what we hear in the room sometimes yeah it's just funky i think when comparing this guitar to the to the michael kelly they are very similar in that, that you know they have the same setup with two humbuckers that are coil capable I think if I played to the same backing tracks in the same key or something and didn't went all the way through, I could really get the more nuances. Whereas, yeah. you know, I was probably playing that about an hour ago, and now I'm just picking this up. And I like both. <laughs> Just and, uh, there's there's a lot of it is less Paul shape right like do you want to yeah. I mean Epi Epi has the advantage on anybody that doesn't want to get sued that they can make a guitar that looks exactly like a, a regular I mean come on it's a this is a perfect segue into being like let's look at it next to this one which yeah. is the Gibson Les Paul Custom this one being a seventy six um, it's the same shape. It's what very well may button. happen is I'll watch, you you know these will make it to the to the, the channel I'll watch them right and then I'll kick myself and say <laughs> I'll be watching the Michael Kelly video going wow oh, that that thing is incredible again it sounds very good uh, coil tap in the middle position. <laughs> They're both pretty awesome. That, yeah, that middle tapped, middle tapped, both coils tapped in the middle position is just such a great cording. I had one of the early Chinese ones. I think this is one of the later Chinese ones. The early Chinese ones had hits and misses. I had a silver burst, and it, it just it didn't I would strongly quality. consider picking one of these up just based on what I'm... Yeah, the 2013s, the Custom Pros, the Les Paul Tributes, and the, and the artist models... Um, are all just really good, solid quality things. Um, Epiphone does some funny things sometimes with finishes where it'll be glossy on top, on the back it'll be like a satin, a thin, thin finish. Not this one. Um, so you just have to make sure you know what you're buying when you get in there and you get home and you're like, oh, I really wish it was gloss all over. Or I, I like the fast feeling that. The, um, 
But in this range, they, they do a, a great product, but they're slowly creeping up in price new. Um, I think these are six or seven hundred dollars new now. Yeah. Um, in the, the, this year's model and whatever it finishes. In 2013, they offered this TV Pelham across, I think, six or seven guitars. The 339, the um, 339, the Firebird, this guy, uh, the Casino. There's a bunch of them. There's five in the picture, including a bass. And so it was a, that year's special thing. And I think I don't know if they've done that every year since then. But I've seen a few of these in the different finishes for sale. And it's just neat. It grabs the eye. Um, I've said before on the channel, I like happy guitars. I mean, this is okay. It's a little depressing. It's black and white, but it's iconic. Um, but I like bright blues. I like reds. I like things that just pop yeah. when you walk in a room. Greens. Because if you're going to have a bunch, they might as well have some variety and some spice and stuff. Yeah. And, and non-guitar people can appreciate them when they're sitting there instead of just saying it's another cherry sunburst or cherry burst or cherry or yeah. black. You're like, ah. So, anyway. A little bit of color goes along. Yeah. That's what you got there. Um, check these out, though. And the great thing about these is they are they sold a ton of them. And they're in Guitar Center. They're in used places. They're around. And they're available used at a great value. So when you're trying to broaden your Strat guy, you want a Les Paul or a Tele guy or, or whatever, or you just need a second guitar, I'd gig with it. I think that it's got Grovers. It's got a good nut. It's got good pickups. It doesn't seem like... Is anything? I think this thing would be a great thing to have. Yeah. And great it's all around guitar. You know, if you're going to buy an Epiphone Les Paul Custom and you really, really want it to be a Gibson Les Paul Custom, there are a handful of small differences that we'll highlight now in rapid order fashion. If we put them up next to each other, you'll see that the Epiphone is suffering from diamond size envy. It's smaller. Um, and that's pretty much across all the Epiphones except maybe the Elitists. You'll see that somebody had a couple chunks taken out of the corners of the headstock. Pretty much the whole Epi line is different from the Gibson big boys there. You'll see that the block inlays on the Epi are actually a little smaller than the block inlays on the Gibson. And then the other thankful thing is the Epi's about two pounds lighter yeah. <laughs> than this guy who was 10 pounds and change before the, the Bigsby was added to it. But those are the, the biggest differences. Oh, in the last one, that is a Rosewood fretboard. This has an ebony fretboard. And Les Paul Custom purists are like, that's the whole point. It's an ebony board, and it does something magical to the tones. I can't back that up. Um, I have no idea. But it's a difference. So if you're looking between the two and, and what the difference between them, aside from thousands of dollars, is that's about it. So anyway, there's a little last closing food for thought. Mm -hmm. Um. Check these out though. Uh, for the money, three, four hundred bucks used. Um, that's just cool. And she'd be party. With that, uh, I've been Nick. And I'm Tim. And obviously, we got issues. Take care, folks. See you later.